to back last 2017 prediction. I normally don't do predictions, but I thought I'd do this one this time. On this card, I believe there's going to be five matches with one match that's going to be on the kickoff show. I'll do the kickoff show match right now. It's going to be very brief. And it's Baron Corgan versus Sami Zayn. The problem I see here is that there's no real interest here. Baron Corgan has been in the main title scene a couple of times. Not just to win a title, but actually has challenged the people who hold the titles. Either in a triple threat or one-on-one. -on -one, which is very good for him. It shows that he can hang there. He talks very well and he works well in the ring. The question is going to be, will they finally get him up there next year? I doubt it's this year. Probably next year when he'll actually have a challenge by himself. Not be some other type of threat or anything to actually get a title. Then you look at Sami Zayn. Whose character is so bad right now, he needs to turn heel. They keep doing the underdog thing with him. Finn Balor, and everybody saw my SmackDown review. Finn Balor, and I said that, can do the underdog thing. Callisto can do the underdog thing. He's bigger than both of them, so he can't really do that. And his character is very bland. Turn him heel and say pretty much... I am the red-headed stepchild of the WWE. I will destroy everyone that stands in my way. Now, who do I think is going to win? It'll probably be Baron Corgan, or he'll probably lose in some screwy ending to Sami Zayn to perpetuate their feud. The first match of the night will probably be Dolph Ziggler versus Shinsuke Nakamura. I don't know if I have any animations with me, or any pictures with me. I probably won't, but... If I do, it'll be sticking on my shoulder. Do I believe this is going to be a good match? Yes. Dolph, no matter who he's working with, makes him look very good. And Shinsuke Nakamura is so unique in the ring. I do believe they'll bring out something very special in their match. But the problem I have with it is that Dolph Ziggler is an enhancement jobber now. He isn't a main event jobber like he used to be like I thought. He's now become an enhancement jobber for beginners. Yeah, he'll jump from the main title scene as a jobber all the way down to the beginner as an enhancement jobber. But that's the way it is with him. And I find that very, very bad. Someone like that, what happens when he goes away or gets injured? You don't have anybody to replace him. That's the main, one of the main reasons that having someone like that is so bad for the company. It's like what's going on with The Miz. The Miz is the best heel they have. There's no one near him except an older talent like Y2J. That's just how I feel about it. Who do I believe is going to win with Shinsuke Nakamura and Dolph Ziggler? To be honest, I'm not exactly sure who will win. And I'm not going to say it. If they want to perpetuate this match, it would be easier just to let Dolph job Shinsuke out by cheating. That would be the obvious thing to do. To keep their, their feud going. Screw over Shinsuke to keep Dolph relevant. But then you got to go, oh, come on. Shinsuke's got to win. So honestly, I don't know who will win that match. But I do believe it's going to be a very good match. Now, the U.S. title. AJ Styles versus Kevin Owens. It's going to be a good match. These guys have known each other for many years. They have wrestled each other more than once over the years. So it's not, they're not unknown to each other. The thing that's going to be interesting is when Y2J comes out. I do believe he will appear at this show. And I do believe he's going to mess over Kevin Owens in some way. But I don't know even if he mess him over, he will lose the title. I'm not sure. I do believe that the feud between him and... Chris Jericho is not over, and actually keeping the title <coughs> on Kevin Owens would probably be a wiser thing to do. That probably would be the wisest thing that would be done by SmackDown Live's brats. But that's just how I feel. I would rather see AJ Styles have a title, but I do believe they're going to main... I just don't want to see AJ without a title, but I do believe Y2J and Kevin Owens are still going to have a feud. The next match should be the six-woman tag with... Ugh, it angers me that this tag is going on. 
Naomi should be having a, a, a feud with someone on the pay-per-view. Not six women having a payout. It should be two. Or at least four. Two separate matches with two separate feuds for the women. I don't know who's going to win it. And to be honest, after what I just saw SmackDown Live, when Naomi jogged herself out to Carmella of all people, why couldn't it have been Carmella versus Becky Lynch? When was the last time we saw Becky Lynch versus Carmella? That would have been a fresh match. Now, I'm not saying Naomi and Carmella wasn't a, a fresh match because we never saw that either, but why did it have to be the champ who had a job? My guess is what's going to probably happen is that, and I don't really want to think of it, but the best option would be that Charlotte is going to screw over Naomi and Naomi will probably eat the pin. I don't believe it's going to be, ba uh, I'm about to say Bailey, Becky Lynch or it's going to be Charlotte. I believe it's going to be, ugh, calm yourself, calm. I do believe Naomi is going to eat a pin due to the fact that Charlotte is going to screw her over. No one said Charlotte has turned face. She's still a heel. But I do believe she may screw over Naomi in the six-woman tag. The tag match of the Fashion Popo or Fashion Panistas versus the Usos. Day one-ish, baby. Do I feel like that's going to be a great match? I don't know. I love the Usos. They've been doing great work on the mic. Then I love the fashion police. Well, like it a lot. I don't think I love them, but I do like them. They've been getting some good traction. It's something different. Do I believe that Tyler Breeze and Fandango are going to win? I don't know. It would actually be a twist with the Usos to actually job or lose to the fashion police. People will get mad that these guys actually won over the Usos. I admit, I'll get mad of them winning over the Usos. But to be honest, it actually would make some sense. Due to the fact they are getting some traction behind by the fans. And it's something different. If anybody ever heard of Brutus the Barber Beefcake, the guy had his own barber shop, did commentary, and was in the ring. And when he won, he cut people's hair off. I want to see Tyler Breeze and Fandango start cutting people's hair off. Little locks of it. Because they can as fashion police. But that's just me. Finally, if I'm forgetting anybody, I'm sorry. This is the one that's going to be the most important. That's going to be very changing for SmackDown Live. Randy Orton versus Jinder Mahal with the Singh Brothers by his side. I'm hoping the Singh Brothers will be banned from ringside. You know why? There's a reason why. I want to see Jinder win this match between him and Randy Orton. The reason I want to see this is because, look, Jinder Mahal has been around for at least eight years. He went away, then came back. He was through 3MB. He worked with the great Kali. I'm not saying that he's one of the greatest talents that exist, but he is a good talent. And because the WWE, in their ignorance, has not built anyone in the last near 10 years, from the time of John Cena, from the time of Edge, Batista, they have not built anybody other than those three people. And I know I could say somebody else. I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting. I'm blanking. But let's be honest here. These guys, women, only once have been built steadily. And then Edge gets injured and then can't wrestle anymore. Batista goes away and does movies and now has become a movie star. Guardians of the Galaxy has been very good. And the only person left next to Randy Orton, that was the other person I was blanking on, is John Cena. And now John Cena is not there often. Either he's doing movies, he's doing press releases, he's going on a Viewer's Choice Awards doing Saturday Night Live. We have no one to replace these guys that has been well fleshed out, very well built, and can do something. Everybody that we got, Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose, Bray Wyatt, Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, in this case, um, Shinsuke Nakamura, 
Look at Finn Balor. The guy was only on the roster a year, and they were willing to throw the title on him. Then he got hurt and was gone for six months. Now he's coming back, and he's going straight into the title scene again. It shows that the WWE, in their foolishness, has not built anybody. Now, you look at Ginger Mahal. I'm not against Ginger. Not, not Ginger. Ginger. I keep getting Ginger and Dinder. I'm sorry. I'm mixing the words up. Please don't kill me in comments. I do like Ginger. He's not a bad talent. I'm hoping that he did P90 to get those chiseled abs and pecs. So I'm hoping for that. But let, let's be honest here. They have no one in the main title scene. Other than people who have been there for years. And then they have other people who are so fresh in there. There have been no build for them. Nothing. You want someone that has been there for a while. Never been given an opportunity. Gender, gender has not been given an opportunity. Like Drew McIntyre who's in NXT right now. He's back in the WWE, and he could be built back up and go back into the main roster, and maybe this time, instead of just giving the Intercontinental title, he could be in the main title scene because the guy has talent. People who have been in the company for more than a few years, well after John Cena won his first title since 2006, has been given no chances. Heath Slater's another example. He only just got a chance to get really liked. And then they dropped him. Put him on Raw. Hopefully he'll get something himself. Because he's got talent. And so does Jinder. I want to see Jinder win clean here. I know I'm going around a very long circle. And I finally came back to it. But look. I want to explain the reason why Jinder was important. He's an older talent that has been around for almost 10 years. He was around since 2009, 2010 at least. He's been there quite a long time. I can't be exactly right about the year. He didn't come in around 2010. He worked with the great Kali at one point. So, when you look at this, you want someone who's an older talent that has never been given an option to finally get an option. No more just giving people who've been in the company maybe four or five years in developmental and then giving a shot now at the main title scene when you've got people who have been in the company for years and you're not willing to do anything with them not because they were entertaining but because they won't do anything with them look at Tamina she's the last person that deserves a title shot Naomi got it now it's Tamina's turn give it to a WWE but my feeling is that Jinder hopefully will win but he'll win by himself clean but if you're gonna be honest if he does win the, the Singh brothers will help him will this pay-per-view be good I believe it will be, but when it comes to the six-woman tag, it's got to have a screwy ending for Naomi to mean something for Charlotte and her. That's just the way I feel about it. And I hope you enjoyed this predictions, Backlash 2017, or Backlash 2017 predictions. Please leave me a comment below. Look for my next um, <coughs> Pro Wrestling Guide for Newbies. It should be coming out soon. I'm working on it right now. Have a good day. Have a good night.